Tour and welcome to Tarmac. I'm Dave. I'm Matthew and because we have here a new Mahindra XUV 700 from India, I should be saying Namaste or Abka Swagate Tarmac Life May. Wow. Anyway, Matthew's right. This is a well-appointed Indian SUV whose value is basically second to none. I mean, none. Come, let's take a look at this. For those that don't know, Mahindra is an Indian company with a global headquarters in Mumbai. It boasts eight business pillars from tractors to IT and an annual turnover around about US 20 billion. The automotive segment takes up a big part of the Mahindra pie with an annual turnover around about 8 billion and a history that dates back to 1947 when 75 Willys Jeeps were sent to their plant in India. Since then, they've grown from strength to strength and are now starting to focus on the SUV market. And hence, this is their big 700 seven-seater. Looking around, you've got Mahindra's new Twin Peaks logo, taking pride of place on the satin chrome six-slot grille. The headlights have got an auto boost function that switches on extra lights at night when you're traveling over 80 kilometers per hour. It's very clever. And also the LED DRLs are very distinctive. The XUV700 comes in five color options. Ours is a ruby red that they call Rage and it contrasts really well with the blackened uh, chrome trims. The wheels are 18 inch diamond cut and come with a premium Indian rubber from Apollo. Another XUV 700 feature is the flush door handles. Obviously they help with aerodynamics, but they make its profile as smooth as a mango lassi. The rear is actually quite interesting. Not only has it got a roofline spoiler, but the LED lights are actually in a arrow shape and the tailgate itself is made of a composite. Open the tailgate up and you've got luggage space of 240 litres with all seats up. And if you drop the rear seats, 450 litres. When you do lift the bonnet, or should you actually lift the bonnet, which is very, very heavy in complete contrast to the tailgate. But a really cool feature is it sets off the hazard warning lights. So I think that's a really good idea. So if you have got the bonnet up, people know that you've got something going on under here. I think it might annoy your mechanic, but let's not worry about that. Anyway, what we have here is a two liter turbocharged N Stallion engine mated to a six speed automatic gearbox. Together, they give you 149.2 kilowatts of power and 380 newton meters of torque. So firstly, I just want to remark on the build quality. I think that's been the most um, special thing of this interior because everything I push or sort of, if I try and shake the center console or, you know, pull the door handles, it's just so solidly made like nothing has a creak about it or I like, can find no sort of mismatch in panels and all of that. That that sort of build quality is quite rare to find in this part of the market, especially at the price that this comes at. So really a big big ups there to Mahindra for what they've built in terms of the solidity of it. Now all of the luxuries, well it's got plenty of those. So Dave talked about the exterior, the garnishing there and all the flashy chrome bits and all of that but on the interior the story is much the same so as you can see this comes with the white uh, leatherette interior option and um, it makes the, the interior look nice and, and quite bright and quite airy um, though I can't help but feel that this material will get dirty over time um, especially if you have kids or you know do off-road activities or any of that sort of thing but that's on you to clean it rather the presentation is really nice the material feels quite soft and quite nice to the touch and you do get some of these sort of perforations as well just to add that extra touch of luxury um, to these seats now the doors and the paneling of course it's all hard plastic for the most part again the price point of this car means that you can't have everything the top of the dashboard well that's scratchy plastic there uh, and the bottom is also scratchy plastic, but it's broken up by sort of some more of that light leatherette material as well as a sort of brightly colored plastic panel as well, just to add that feeling of luxury in here. Looking at the center console, well, you've got two slots for your phone actually. So you've got one tucked away in there, which doesn't charge it or anything. And you've got one wireless charging pad as well. Again, very impressive. 
You've also got two USB ports underneath there, again hidden away from sort of the driver's view along with the phone storage just to keep that whole thing away from the driver. You've got two cup holders down the middle in this gloss black plastic panel here and the little buttons and, and dials and frames and stuff are also highlighted in like a, a satin plastic sort of finish to give it a bit more of a luxurious touch to it. In terms of storage, they really thought this through. The door bins are quite carnivorous. They can handle a large bottle and, you know, what else, maybe a tablet and some other stuff in there too. You've got two cup holders in here and you've got nice big storage area underneath the central armrest here which actually has got a lot of weight to it as well very impressive from that part okay so this screen set up here you've got your infotainment screen in the middle and your driver's display on the driver's side of course and both screens are the same size they're both 26.03 centimeters and let's focus on this screen in the middle for now. I just noticed that they're actually both showing different times as well, but never mind that. So this is the home view. You have your audio input there and look at this Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on a car at this price. It's pretty amazing. You can flick through as well for some more phone connectivity and apps as well. And then if you press the home button there, it presents you with your connectivity options as well as two other options, which are the fun in XUV700 as well as the fun with XUV700. So if I press that, then I go back to this connectivity and all the sort of interior um, features. And if I press that home button again and go to the fun with XUV700, it actually gives me a torque and power meter. It gives me a compass as well as a G-force meter there. So no wonder the launch of this car was done on a racetrack if it can give you this sort of performance telemetry to look at. Now, on the screen here, you'll also notice that they have the smart air filter there. So that's for your air conditioning. Keep the cabin nice and fresh. And then over here, you have the air conditioning controls in terms of temperature and your fan speed. Now, the other key thing, if I do take us back to the home menu there and actually swipe up, you'll see a whole bunch of shortcuts of various different applications there, including... India Today, um, and then there's also Zomato there, which are, of course, India-specific apps, but helpful if you do have any sort of interest in either Indian news or the economy there. Notice also the gallery and the ability to add more folders and the shortcuts to the climate control, which is handy, but you also have physical buttons for your climate control down the bottom there. Anyway, with this screen done, let's take a look at the driver's display. Okay, so in front of the driver is another 26.03 centimeter screen. And as you can see there, it's got sort of an analog style to it with your rev count on the right, speedometer on the left, and then of course a digital speedo as well as then your gear sort of um, information over there. You've got your driving information in the middle there, but that screen is customizable. So if I press the buttons on the screen, on the steering wheel, sorry, I can't actually flick flick through the different menus and if I press this other button here I can actually choose the other options of information that I'd like to see including the navigation as well so there is plenty to change and to view as well on the screen over here now going back to the steering wheel it is actually a nice chunky unit you've got your thumb grips there flat bottom for a little bit of sportiness and then you've got your buttons on either side with the left side controlling your connectivity and the right side controlling actually adaptive cruise, which is pretty amazing at this price point as well. Now in the middle row of this XUV700, you can see there's plenty of space um, for a decent sized human being, even like myself here. So I've got enough of knee room there. I've got plenty of foot room down the bottom and headroom as well. You can see is quite decent, despite the fact that there is a large sky roof above me that is a trademark term by the way not one that i just made up and that sky roof actually lets in plenty of light into this interior along with of course the big windows all along really handy seating across here you can easily fit two adults and probably a third one and a stretch too um, which is pretty good for size wise here 
You've got air conditioning vents for the middle row here as well as a USB-C ch charger and I must add that there is also a 12 speaker Sony audio system with speakers all around including at the various corners too. Speaking of the corners, let's take a look at that third row of seats. Now once you've used the one touch tumble feature to fold that middle row seat down and get into the back, you'll actually be surprised to see how much of room is in here to be honest because I'm just under six foot and I'm sitting comfortably to be honest. I can recline back, my head is just about touching the roof but there is still a little bit of room even if you are sort of above six foot if you like. My feet are just fine here and as well I've tried with the seat upright that my knees are against it but again I'm not comfortable you know I can manage a short journey even in the third row here which is not something you can say frankly about a lot of seven-seater SUVs so quite impressive. Now as somebody who does get car sick these large windows are appreciated there and I do also have air conditioning vents on both sides with a dial for three different fan speeds and I have a 12 volt socket back here as well as some cup holders so they have thought about pretty much every department there as well as the sound because look there's a speaker just up there by my ear and same for the other passenger there. So plenty going on in the interior and plenty of thoughtfulness in this sort of seating arrangement here. Now let's see if the drive matches the same. So this XUV700 pretty much marks Mahindra's reintroduction into New Zealand. It's their first um, new car that they've brought here under this new sort of badge that they have and it'll be followed shortly by the Scorpio N as well. But for now this XUV, well, it's really something we haven't talked about so far is the price point and that's quite unbelievable actually. It starts off at 36,990 for the base spec model and then this top spec car is available at 43,990. So amazing value for a seven-seater SUV with all this tech, all this safety and all this luxury. Absolutely. I mean, they have crammed, I mean, it's a big vehicle anyway, but they've crammed a ton of stuff into it, both, I mean, the, the bonnet, under the bonnet, the, the engine is so talky and so much, you know, it's, it's very playful. There's actually lots going on. And also the tech, the screen is so modern and the, the, the tech does have a few gremlins and uh, but I think they'll get ironed out but it's just, there's just so much stuff in terms of ADAS and stuff like that that's going on with this vehicle it's it's as Matthew says huge huge value absolutely and the fact that you get little luxuries or well should I say big luxuries like that 12 speaker audio system that skyroof trademark and of course, the suite of safety systems, including adaptive cruise control, you get dual zone climate control, wireless phone charging, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I mean, the list just keeps going on and on. Yeah, absolutely. The big thing for me though, is just how quiet a ride this is. The, as many of you will know, New Zealand roads are quite coarse and also there's also a lot that are unsealed, but this just laps them up. It just, the, the as probably <laughs> proven by the big heavy bonnet, there's so much emphasis on MVH that this is just a really sweet ride for, for all involved in whichever seat you want to switch, whichever seat you want to sit in. Absolutely. I mean, it's tough enough to find a seven seater with seven usable seats which this has by the way and then at this point price point is even more unbelievable and then you throw in the fact that it actually rides so quietly and so smoothly on our course you know New Zealand roads and it makes it a real real really impressive vehicle all around you know or even disregarding the price point yeah it's an absolute pleasure visibility all around the windscreen is massive there's the the door mirrors oh sorry the door windows go down below the doors which is quite funky but obviously visibility is really good there and even out the rear and with the 360 degree cameras really good steering wires there's actually a nice weight to it i'm not really sure if it's drive by wire or not or whether there is a steering column but it feels very nice and braking is is again is is pretty good for a vehicle that doesn't feel that heavy absolutely and i mean 
it's it may not feel as heavy behind the steering wheel but all the the fit and finish and the fact that everything's so rock solid in place in here is really a testament to that quality um, that Mahindra can bring and especially at this price point I keep talking about the price you point call it because it's such a it's like the elephant in the room you know you can talk about this car but then you add, throw that number in and it, all of a sudden it becomes like wow you know i think the added bonus is that there's either a five or seven year warranty with this as well so it's just it's a it's a vehicle that just keeps giving and on the matter of giving i mean i took this on the racetrack you, you guys probably saw the video or may have seen the video but doing 157 kilom kilometers an hour in a vehicle that should be a nice cruisy seven seater is quite phenomenal and i didn't feel frightened at all thankfully i was alone though yeah, they just left Dave to his devices on the racetrack and that was that. But you all loved that video too about the performance aspect of the XUV, which hasn't really been explored so far in the past. And the fact that it is can handle itself, as Dave proved, around a racetrack without too much squealing from the tires. Ah, it was a little bit of squealing. I think it was a little bit of squealing by me as well, which is great. Look, it's a very comfortable ride and that's the big thing about it. And I think whichever seat you happen to be in, um, I mean, take your pick. They're all comfy and they're all really good. So there you have it, the new Mahindra XUV 700. And I think it's got the L on the bottom as well. L for luxury and really is luxury and refinement. It's got all the stuff and the trimmings that you'd expect to see in a in a, a, a well laid out European vehicle, but realistically for half the price. It really is astonishing. And at the same time, adding that little bit of an Indian character to the New Zealand SUV market. So certainly plenty of spice. And Tika it or leave it, bolty down to your your vehicle specialist and get one of these. It's a or take it for a drive. It's a it's a it's a premium vehicle. Very very good. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and see you on the next one. Whoa.